ghost thing. Well, sometimes it's a spirit who just wants to stay. They play the piano, fine. But to actually precipitate... We, I've had people fight me because I've been in places and they didn't want their pet ghost taken away. And, and, and not only was that person, could have been my son, my nephew, a neighbor, me, mm -hmm. but given enough time, evil will eventually come and use the psychic energy from those spirits. So, for both ourselves and for the sake of spirits who are stuck, human or animal, it's, it's nice to at least try to help them ascend. That's the whole name of the game, Ascend. What is your take on all the television shows that are now flogging ghost hunters who who use this shoddy night shot vision and who use psychics who are screaming and doors that open? Mind you, you never see the full door that, that is opening. Uh, you only see a certain part of it, and I'm sure that there's people up there using their hands or as we've done uh, during uh, TV specials, uh, nylon wire that you can't see. What's your, what's your take on them? My, I'll tell you mine first. I think they're stupid. I think that there's something that they bring to the table about awareness that's good. I think it's phenomenally outweighed by the harm they're doing. Mm -hmm. I'm right with you, Rob. Um, I actually have stayed away from that on your show several times, because we're, we're friends by now. We've been on a, a number of times. And I stayed away from that because I have had to be a little careful. I've had this, you know, lime and stuff that I've been kind of dealing health-wise. I'm not at, at my 100% for, for a few years. Mm -hmm. So was it jealousy that I, I only did a few documentaries? I don't really have the punch in me to get them done. And I was really careful with that for some years. I've looked at things now. At, at this point, I'm doing things with science, with corporate America. I, I, I don't have to worry about my, you know, my, my career, so to speak, my work. I would have to say now, without any jealousy involved, I don't know anybody, save one or two people, that I would even consider having over and checking the situation out. I don't think they mean harm. I think the media has steered it in such a way that what it is, it's a cheap way for people to get a quick fix with the spirit world. And I think a lot of people are going to get hurt real bad with this. I was just going to ask you, is it dangerous with what they're doing? Are they going to it, harm it, themselves? It, it, I'm going to sound a little bit like a, like a soapbox, and I, I don't want to because I don't like people who do, even if they have a reason to. In a sense, we all have soapboxes. But I would say that start counting fingers more than one, two, or three digits. Just people who will probably be led to suicide and other kinds of activity just from overexposure to the spirit world, to magic, to spells, because it's very indiscriminate. It's kind of, it, it's been lumped, it's, it's, it's that neat stuff out there. And just a few people I know, families, I've definitely had some suicides in among families from kids playing with this stuff, and all of a sudden, their lives took a turn. How about Ouija boards? Are they as dangerous as people say they are, or is it just a toy gone bad? Would I use one? Nope. Um, I, I played with drugs, much to my dismay and, and, and my lesson earlier in life. I'm glad it was drugs and not a Ouija board, and I, and I did some harm to myself that way. I'm sure there's a few people out there who use them and probably don't get hurt, mm -hmm. but it's like driving drunk. Um, I, I, I wouldn't do it, and it, it's almost, it's almost pseudo-comical the way so many cases start out. Oh my God, the name you're getting is the name of the spirit of a, of a Ouija board I used in college 10 years ago. I don't know how many times I've heard that out of people's mouths. It ain't good. How do the spirits? It's, you know, it's, it, it's an open invite. But how do the spirits on the other side, good or bad, know where there's a porthole that they can slip into this realm of our dimensional reality? They often wait um, for people who are susceptible, mm -hmm. who are talking about it. Remember how a seance happens or how prayers are answered. We ask for things. You know, most of the spirit world doesn't have a lot to do with us, even if it's loving hands. They, they, they're doing their thing. 
but the ones closest to us are either going to be recent departed relatives or guides, guardians, animal friends, or they're going to be spirits who are awaiting an opportunity and who run along with people who are indiscriminate, who are really obsessed with a certain kind of power they can amass, um, who open doors and want them opened despite any possibility of danger because they're, they're taken by it, they're seduced. So the spirits that are most likely to hang around wanting that to happen very much are able to know those people. In the same way that people who, who have strange behavior patterns seem to find other people of like kind, you know, even on this earth, it's funny how that happens. People just, that's, that's really a law of attraction. Like attracts like. You want it, there's, there, you want something, and then there are those energies waiting to be wanted. So it's a match, and it's a match not made in heaven. Richard P. Jackson is our special guest, www.richardpjackson.com. Richard, how about these or groups, organizations, uh, wackos who go door to door uh, upon the request of some poor person who believes their house is haunted? Now, before people call ghost groups ghost hunters or ghost wackos, what should they do to make sure that, number one, there is a there is a paranormal event happening, and should they first of all go to these ghost investigators, or should they go somewhere else first? I'd say the first thing to do, whatever their beliefs are, mm -hmm. is first to ask that if there's anything here that isn't of God's light, that it it leave. Um, anything that's not wanted here, we're requesting to leave, and whatever a person believes in. As long as there's someone around who's a legitimate priest or minister, I would ask for a blessing. Uh, it, it's very easy. I mean, that would be the first place. You have somebody who at least took part of their life and said, I I'm going to serve God in my way. Mm -hmm. You're at least starting with somebody who means well. And at least if you're going to start somewhere, I'd start there. After that, I, you know something? I don't really know who I... There's a few people that I would consider calling. Most of the people I have worked with are either retired, uh, overseas, or deceased. If you, and I'm sure there's people, but I don't know many. What should someone look for if they really believe that they need the help of a paranormal researcher or a ghost hunter or, or a ghost group organization? What should they look for? Um, credibility, references, and bona fide people, um, both through referentials, um, through either education or ministerial, mm -hmm. um, and also why they're doing it. You know, why are people doing this? What's their reason? And many people, and I know what it's like, when I first started, it was very seductive. I couldn't wait to go on my next case. Now, I really don't want to get a call, but if I get a call, I'll try to be helpful. Because it's 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 something I still must do, but I, and I, meant, I, I mentioned to you this to you before what it's given me and what it gives to other people in their way is it's brought other things to the table. I'm able to work with people um, with coaching. People are able to work in their own lives better because they realize there's a causal link to the spirit world. Sometimes they don't have to ask for it to be there. Maybe their job in moving into a house was simply to ask the God's blessings come into it because the next person simply won't have a problem and they may be more vulnerable than the people who are in fact experiencing something. We're all here to help each other a little bit and that's what we should do. So it's really helped me do things, believe it or not, from weight loss to pain management to visualizing um, to what prayer is all about. Um, it's, it's helped me across the board because it made me understand there, there are spiritual laws and they do exist, and we have, to, we have to be aware of them. They simply are teaching tools. There's always exceptions, but there really are laws, just like gravity. There's laws in the spirit world. Where is hell? I, I'm sorry, Rob? Where is hell? We hear about uh, the devil and all the negativity. That... It, it's right in front of your nose, just like heaven. It's, it's a matter of frequency or vibration. Somebody could turn into the X zone, or they could listen to 
jazz on another channel mm -hmm. or some horrible agenda of some crazy, you know, nutcase or some gangster rap or blues or jazz. It's a matter of what we tune into or what tunes us in. It's not a matter of where it is. It's a matter really of what it is which is why people should do their best to always think in terms of maintaining as high a frequency as, as one can. Think, think good thoughts if possible. If not, sprinkle it with humor. Be appreciative. Gratitude. It all makes the frequency a whole lot higher, so we're a whole lot closer to heavenly beings than hellish beings. Richard P. Jackson is my guest, and uh, Richard, you and I have to take our final commercial break for this hour. Thanks very much for being with us. It's always great talking to you, buddy. His website is www.richardpjackson.com. That's www.richardpjackson.com. Now, Exonation, if you believe that you're having a paranormal problem and you need help in being pointed in the right direction, send me an email, exone at exoneradiotv.com. That's exone at exoneradiotv.com. We'll do our best to help you. Uh, the worst thing that I would like to see happen to you is that you get a bunch of woo-woos into your house, to your business, wherever you believe this event is happening. And they just make it all that worse for you, and they just simply go home come the end of the night, leaving you with a bigger problem than, than you had when they arrived. Once again, my email address is xzone at xzoneradiotv.com, and we guarantee you 100% confidentiality. I'll be back on the other side of this commercial break with Richard P. Jackson as we continue right here live and around the world in the X-Zone. Whatever you do, don't go away. We'll be back after this news break. With each new extreme weather event or terrorist act, it becomes increasingly obvious that we live in uncertain and challenging times. We all buy car insurance. Why not collapse and catastrophe insurance? Matthew Stein, an MIT-trained engineer and green builder, has written two outstanding books to help people prepare, plan for, and deal with everything from minor situations lasting a few days to full-on collapse. Matt's first book, When Technology Fails, is a manual for self-reliance, sustainable living, and surviving the long emergency. This massive book covers the gamut from first aid and emergency preparedness to alternative healing, renewable energy, primitive living skills, and 18th century technologies that could be critical to your comfort and survival in a long-lasting crisis. Matt's second book, When Disaster Strikes, is a comprehensive emergency preparedness handbook and survival guide. When Disaster Strikes is an essential item for every family's go-bag. Both books are available at all usual sources, there's a wealth of totally free information posted at whentechfails.com and author signed copies may be purchased at mattstein.com. That's www.whentechfails.com and www.mattstein.com. Rob McConnell here, presenting an overview for Nicholas Paul Jinnix, author of a fascinating book, Amen. It presents facts revealed by Egyptologists, facts that enable us to understand why Amen is the beginning of creation of God. It provides recommendations for religious leaders of the major religions to unify their beliefs and teach the word of God, love one another. Amen informs people how mankind conceived God, it was the Egyptians that developed the concepts of a soul, a hereafter, and son of God. And finally, after the worship of many gods, they conceived the belief in one universal God, the maker of all there is. For more information, visit www.futureofgodamen.com. That's www.futureofgodamen.com. Down the 
Georgia, he was looking for a soul to steal. He was in a bind because he was way behind and he was willing to make a deal. 